Now, yes. is, is Eno online? Yeah, yeah, Eno is online. I, is he here? Is he here? No, in TS. <sighs> tell, tell Eno, tell Eno Jampad says hi. But uh, where do you know him from? We bumped into each other last time we had a raid. He was a... Uh, we just sort of got along. How old are you? Me? I'm 26. Oh. Bit of a personal Ooh, question, but I'm, I'll, I'll offer it. Too young. <laughs> was I getting vetted there? Was that like a how old are you? 26. <laughs> oh, I'll swipe left. No! I'll, I'll go fuck off. <laughs> well done. Good fight. Good fight. Good fight, everyone. Good fight. Just, Jesus Christ. Good night. Hello. Oh, oh, good night. Oh, yeah. Oh, good night. Yes. Sleep well. Fuck him up. Fuck him up. I'm okay. I'm not. I'm not much of a fighter. Like I'm. I, 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 take it as red. Oh, now just take the W, man. Look, come on. I'm. I'm. I'm not much of a fighter. Oh, fuck's sake. All right. I suppose what have I got to lose? Go on. Ah, oh, fuck's sake. Yeah, you see. I would say good fight, but it really wasn't, was it? Bandage. Bandage here. Ah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cause we got love Cause we got love Today we begin with a philosophical proposition. It's called the Hegelian Dialectic. You may have learned of it in philosophy if you ever did that in school, or more likely, such as myself, you sided with Caesar one time in Fallout New Vegas. In short, the principle follows that when an idea is proposed, it presents a thesis, which in turn by its own existence creates an antithesis, literally an antithesis. A conflict is inevitable between the two, and the resolution of said conflict yields a synthesis, and in the process either perfects the idea or destroys it. The thing is, you can take that principle or equation and apply it to anything, not just ideas. Every great nation in history has had its struggles. They emerge stronger, for the most part. And why shouldn't it apply to a guild? Ashenfell is about to embark upon its greatest struggle yet. Declaring war on everything. Our leader truly is a stable genius. So yeah, all that shit about the Hegelian dialectic basically means one of two things is about to happen. Either we are going to die, or we're going to turn Super Saiyan and kill everyone. One of these is more likely than the others. If we were to kill everyone though, we would uh, have to learn some serious lessons, and believe me, there were some tough lessons ahead. In terms of geopolitics, with the destruction of saints, the only two zergs left on the EU of any serious repute were Uganda and Spice. And with Spice being all the way up north, it was only natural we pick a fight with Uganda. It's our war with them I wish to recount for you. It's in fighting the big blue blob I learned what an enemy not so easily broken looks like. The sons of Harambe versus the children of Kone. Two dead memes will vie for control of a dead game. The trained retards of Ashenfell versus the child soldiers of Uganda. The gorillas versus the gorillas. The battle for jungle supremacy has begun. So yeah, the earliest major battle I remember with Uganda actually predates the end of the war with saints. It was known colloquially within Ashenfell as the big yoink. The reason for that is we got into a tile when the majority of their fleet was still out and caught them with their pants down. About 60 of our guys got in and we proceeded to destroy multiple walkers, proxies and fobs. It was a totally successful raid. It also had a rather odd fallout where the head admin of Uganda claimed they were leaving the game due to its current state. Yeah, okay. Evidently that didn't happen, and I have heard some people claim he was actually just joking, but whether it was a genuine bitch fit doesn't really matter. The rest of the admins in Uganda disagreed, and they did not leave the game. In the following days, we were mopping up the remnants of saints, so we'll be jumping ahead quite a bit now. We managed to catch Uganda out. Sort of. I mean, not really. We arrived with four buffaloes and 35-odd crew just as Uganda were leaving a server. We did not have a fob. We forgot to bring one of those. That was an oversight. So the play was risky, but considered worth it. We attacked. 
undersupplied and outnumbered. Man is ballistic Everyone now. Get off, get off barracks. Okay, I'm gonna go down soon. I've got no wings. I'm gonna go down, please. This is down for sure. Get off barracks. Oh, okay. What's the fucking shoot? We're getting shot. Team. Should we bring in the other buffalo or no? Should I bring in the other buffalo? Okay, Listen, uh, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm we need trying. to focus oh, on command. Okay, you good Listen. team. DT. Oh, he's going down. One. I'm gonna go DT. down. DT. Alright, well. Yeah, be on our walkers. Keep on delaying. Use our ballista. Might be one. Too much right now. We're dying. Yeah, this is retarded. Okay, yep. uh, Silverback. Everybody should be on, fighting on the side. They're doing another push. Stop where this is Start boarding the from both buffaloes. Look for these people. Spawns, spawns, yeah, right? We'll focus the spawns and I'm not going anywhere. Kill these guys here. Good job, good job, good job. Don't go alone, boys. Leave them. the walkers to us. I mean, we're losing a lot of people, by the way. Like, you're again. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, it's been pushed like an Uh, uh, well, okay, yeah, okay, I'll go in as well. You fucking just keep refilling this, okay? Keep refilling. Okay. People are pushing it. I see people there now, but the thing is, I'm standing at this other one. Push up the hill, push up the hill yeah, on BT, on BT. Yeah, but which, which direction? It's up there, fucking look on the map, fucking east. Okay, listen, no, look west, for BT west, first. West, west, west. Where everyone push towards west, push towards T. Look for my name too. Hello. On the back, get up here. Look at your fucking comfort. Where Monko is, look for Monko and me. Come on. Push this buff, everyone board it now. Okay, board, mass board, mass board, mass board. They're burning Escobar. Don't beat, okay. If you can try and get some fire bolts out of the Escobar, please. Okay. Clear this buff, oh, we're, we're overwhelmed. Alright, it's fine. Actually, it's not. Yeah, we need more people. Yeah. Okay, just get the, uh, go over there and pull the, some people pull the bolts out. Don't let them go out. The thing is, right now, the problem we have is probably just restocking water constantly right now. That is in the boxes. Are they are they tagging pumpkins right now? Okay, silverback yeah. spawn. We need to we need to pull in that last buffalo. So we have to we clear this one and then we can clear one. Board it, board it. Why are you doing only jump? Has jump the only pad pad on. Why is yes, jump pad only on it? Like. Great, <laughs> <laughs> no, get off of it, get off of it, guys. We're gonna take one out. Oh, nice Every single pair. They go fucking to death, here, boys. Get on that buffalo, right side, right apes, side. Man. Apes, strong. Apes strong together. Man, just fucking watch your team, man. Oh my god, I'm getting trapped here. It's one of the more interesting fights I've ever been in, actually, because Ashenfell have a doctrine of closing and killing enemies as quickly as possible. We like to fight in melee combat, it's what we're good at. So when it comes to walker battles, we de-leg as fast as possible, then engage in hand-to-hand. -hand. It's primitive, but for us, rarely fails. However, Uganda equipped their buffaloes with gun pods galore, which provided their walkers with superior firepower and simultaneously provided a second layer for their legs. This meant we had no chance of de-legging them first. It took about three of our walkers to bring down two of theirs, I think. I know we brought down at least two, but even with the video it's hard to tell because of all the dust. Either way, it was interesting that the superior firepower doctrine of Uganda effectively nullified our melee combat doctrine, since we couldn't keep the fight in one place. So we lost control of the field and two of our buffaloes were burned. We were lucky it wasn't three, to be honest, so, you know, small mercies, I suppose. A loss to be sure, but fun and educational. Much later that evening, Oh, I should say the morning, Uganda slot capped our server about 1.30 a.m. GMT by a strong American contingent. Most of our members were asleep, as we're an EU guild. Subsequently, we had something like 20 to 30 members just online, never mind in the server. And they had at least 50, although I've heard estimates as high as 70, but that sounds a bit far-fetched to me. The point is we've been caught with our pants down again and couldn't mount a proper defense. It took them about six hours, but they broke into our base and completely destroyed it. I wasn't actually there because I was far too busy having sex with their mothers, so I don't have any video and I couldn't find any afterwards, so all I have are these screens. We despawned most materials and just about got away with it. The enduring memory of that raid for us was the artistry we left behind in the boxes and the funny face one of their streamers made when he saw it. So yeah, we lost a shit ton of mats, but you know, a day or two of PvE would saw that. Not the first time we've lost our main base and it won't be the last. Slot capping's a bitch, happens to everyone. We invaded a vacant tile that Uganda were trying to lay claim to. We didn't actually have a proxy with us. Our only intention that day was to get into a decent scrap with our newly modified walkers now fit for the gun pod meta. A good scuffle entailed where we charged down the mountain, we gave them a good slap and then we gave them another good slap and then they ran away the moment their proxy timer was done. They went to the trade station and safe logged. It was very annoying. It was somewhere in the midst of this annoyance that I suppose a straw landed on the camel's back for Beric. Beric decided he'd had enough and he wanted to step down. The reason he gave being, quite reasonably, he felt it was becoming impossible to find content for the membership and in the wake of what we'd witnessed today, that was understandable.
The guild was on fire! So Beric returned after much pestering from us and triggering from the shit-talking Uganda membership. He immediately discovered an insider and booted him. I'm fairly certain from what I've heard he was not actually working for anyone. I think he was just one of those weirdos who likes despawning things. He was an ex-saint, I know that. Anyway, that's it. On this day, the volcano update was rolled out. Among the new content were chairs. Which was a surprisingly divisive issue. Why do you build so many chairs, by the way? Just sit on the cans, they're comfortable. <clears throat> this was the day the server capping issue was due to be partially resolved. Supposedly there would be hard caps added to servers so you could enter your own server, provided your clan owned it, in the event of an attempted slot cap. But when we tried to perform another big yoink on Uganda, pff, fuck me, that was a juicy target, we were stuck in a queue permanently despite the server population being spacious. For whatever reason, the new system gave the owners of any given tile priority to the point it was now impossible to invade another server en masse. Even so, regardless of that, the same day Beric managed to get into an enemy server with a single buffalo and got completely fucking overwhelmed due to lack of reinforcement, it really hammered home the point that all major offensive actions would be impossible until the problem was fixed. It became evident to us the map was shrinking again, due to the shrinking player base. Regardless of that, we decided we had enough of the shit tile spawns in the south, so we resolved once the server switching issues were solved that we would move north in search of a volcano tile. We made an attempt to covertly burn a Uganda tile, and although we burned the proxy successfully, Uganda were able to successfully counter-raid, we lost the Falco, they lost the Buffalo. No great developments here other than us deciding Falcos weren't fit for the current meta as a warship. Moving forward, we would exclusively use Buffaloes as our ships of the line, and Stilettos as our pursuit ships. Ugh. This was a bad day. This day, the hard cap was fixed. 20 people. It's not really enough, but never mind that. Uganda made the most of it first, invading one of our tiles with the proxy timer there nearly up, and due to a cock-up in communication, a response was mounted far too late, and Uganda destroyed the proxy without any difficulty. Lost the proxy, lost the tile. It happens all the time, but it is still annoying. In response, we invaded one of their tiles to do the same, tit for tat. However, due to another cock up in communication, our crafting fleet was still out on our server. And Uganda were watching. They slot capped us, ransacked anything outside our base, looted our base tusker, burned two buffaloes, and by far worst of all, they burned our primary crafting domus. A humiliating loss. Seagrid's sex dungeon, such as the domus was named, was the heart of our crafting fleet. Nearly all of our valuable crafting materials, ceramics, iron, and other quality materials were produced on that domus, since we moved everything over from our old crafting titan. I think it's true to say, the loss of that domus and its contents was the single greatest loss to Ashenfell ever on Last Oasis. And on top of that, it was all due to an unforced error on our part. It was our fault. It was fucking depressing. If there was a darkest hour, this was it. Who's tougher? The three men who beat up the one man, or the one man who gets back up? Reconstruction of the war fleet began, and the vibe within Ashenfell took on a more calm and meditative tone. There wasn't the same brashness we'd felt in the fallout with the war with Saints only a week before. I'll speak for myself, when it's around this time I started to respect Uganda a lot more than I had. There was a view pervade within Ashenfell that within the context of Last Oasis, in an even fight, we were almost unbeatable. Yes, we had been griefed, outmaneuvered, and outfoxed at every turn, but never once had we been outfought. It sounds like I'm grasping at straws, but the distinction was important to us. Such was our view. In the Battle of the Dust, we lost because we didn't have the gun pod meta, we didn't have the fob, and we were outnumbered. In the Siege of Wooded Haven, we were slot capped in the middle of the night. The one fight that had been even, albeit we did have the high ground, was the Battle of Thriving Mountains, where they ran away the moment the proxy timer was up, and that one had been going our way, remember. In our mind, our failures were due to bad planning, bad preparation, bad internal communication, and as much as I hate to admit it, good chess playing on the part of Uganda. These, for the most part, were problems that were unforced and could be repaired. Yes, we had suffered some terrible losses, but you know we weren't in complete darkness. The path was clear. And why respect Uganda in the wake of all this? Man for man, apart from their griefers, who are excellent at what they do, we didn't think that much of Uganda as fighters, but as a Zerg, they were outstanding. You know, like, we're the samurai and they're the conscript army. Which, by the way, look it up, the conscript army wins. Mm -hmm. 
the thing is, if you accept that proposition, then it starts to make sense to not fight us with even numbers. We play tall, they play wide. Fighting us fairly would be dumb. If we do it your way, Kingslayer, you'd win. Yeah, that. Tactically, Uganda nearly always made the right call. It's both clever and annoying. But then all's fair in love and war, I guess. You may also be starting to understand what I was gibbering about with the Hegelian dialectics as well. Ashenfell and Uganda have a fundamentally different approach about how to enjoy the game. Ashenfell are a bunch of football hooligans who want a good scrap. Uganda want to win, at all costs, even if that means sometimes not fighting. If that's the case, it would go some way to explaining some of the vitriol in this war. We are absolute binary opposites. All that's a thesis of mine, though. They may have their own opinion on it. Anyway, as I said earlier, regardless of whether or not we wanted to remain in our current position in the south, it became clear the map was shrinking again, so we were forced to move north, away from Uganda, and we successfully moved our war, transport, and farming fleets northwards without incident. A small mercy in the wake of recent disasters. The great PvE effort moved ahead this day, and through heavy farming and hard work, we constructed multiple proxies, began expanding our territory in the north, and reconstructed several warships. We also had a fight against Spice since we were now bordering with them. Um, we contested one of their tiles, and in the process we became bogged down and lost several walkers to Spice. So much for being unbeatable. It actually went to shit because the door of our fob was left open and beds got destroyed, so we learned some important lessons about making fobs idiot-proof. A worthwhile lesson to be sure. After a few days of irrelevant skirmishes and scuffles, by now the war fleet was ready, and the apes hungered for blood. With the recent addition of the volcano update, the new lava maps were regarded as prime territory for its abundance of fiber, lava, and giant bleeding birds. So we had two goals in mind at the time, real estate and revenge. By an odd twist of fate, we had a chance to kill two giant bleeding birds with one stone. I put pressure on them to shoot them for now. Try and hit their legs with anything. Yeah. They're coming to the front. Come on. I got the driver on. Any fucking any info on leg kick. Eric, you got one of the buffaloes. He's like these buffaloes down the hill now. Yeah, then right, then gathering on the white. Yeah, behind the buffalo. Right? Uh, those bolts better get those rhino coming in. Okay, have we cleared that buffalo fully? Might be rhino now. Okay, war rhino go. War. Jump off actually in a second. Ready on camera log. They've only got they've more firebox. Fucking oh. saw the fire. 5k inside. Oh. There. No, I said it. Burn down. We move. Oh, once that's oh. down, we love you. Hold that fucking up. This fucking. It's a fucking dump. Okay, of course we have two minutes left. Oh. There's there is not enough. People. We have four. That hit us to keep spawning on the. They're, I think they're got. They're, they're, they're fucking digging, digging on the hill. They're digging on the hill behind us. Oh, finally. Okay, good job. Five, one, three, all here. Uh, the left one, yeah. Cargo, though. Cargo, please. Yeah, I was like, get up. Nice, small ground. I'm gonna stop in the car. Wedding, though. I mean, it was fun, but still. Guys, I'm sure about this problem. What is this? Oh, 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 what is this? On the back, on the back. <laughs> 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 After a miserable week of being outmaneuvered and PvEing for our mistakes, it wasn't the largest or the toughest victory ever. But bugger me if it wasn't the most satisfying. We managed to get about 50 guys in the server at the beginning, so we had the advantage in numbers. I know Uganda had at least 40 by the names I counted in the kill feed. It wasn't quite the skill-driven smackdown we were looking for, but it was more than enough. Our teeth were still sharp and we could still threaten the progress of the largest guild in EU. God, it felt good. Uganda invaded our home tile in the early hours of the morning again, it's like 7 GMT this time though, and destroyed the much beloved farming walker, the Canadian Lumberjack. They came in with a Falco, destroyed it, and fucked off. This, uh, it rustled our jimmies pretty good, I'm not gonna lie, we'd had that walker for a long time, and there would be blood for it, and later that evening, we paid them back tenfold. <laughs>
Then the war ended. For good reason. Because in other news, there was an exodus of guilds from Last Oasis to go and play Atlas since season four was about to launch over there. I have heard nothing but optimism about Last Oasis and the desire to return and play it at some point in the future when it's a more finished product seems, you know, fairly unilateral. But for now, nevertheless, the call of Atlas was too strong, apparently. And it is worth mentioning that we actually fought Spice quite a few times while we were up in the north, but most of them left to play Atlas as well. I Sorry, I Atlas. only remember, like, n noticeable people. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, 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 he's oh, gone. He killed him, oh, I killed him. <laughs> you literally just insulted him, him to death. So the war with Spice is over as well. We didn't win the war with Uganda, neither did they mind. Indeed, it's technically still ongoing, but the result is now moot. I very much doubt we've seen the last of each other though. Not a dramatic conclusion, but rather an indecisive stalemate. Although, as I say, I believe one day we will remember this as the first Ashenfell Uganda war. We went looking for a fight on a random tile that Pirate Gaming lived on, and we just fucking annihilated them. Against us, they were pretty much defenseless. We were way too many. And this is a snapshot of what I suspect the game might end up looking like with oh, fucking Rupert. Fuck! With no one around really to challenge us, the only thing left for us is to roam around like Mongols destroying everything in our path. It's a PvP survival game, you know, the strong prey on the weak, but it doesn't thrill me. Pains me to say it so soon, but I think the first season of Last Oasis is over. I'm sure the autistic screeching over who won will continue for many months more. With the real world about to emerge out of its COVID-19 slumber, I don't know if I'll ever have the time again to return, since everybody is splitting up now between Space Engineers, Conan Exile, and God knows what else. Also, with Beric claiming he won't take a leadership position again, I don't know that this will ever be the same again. It's only been a few weeks since this all abruptly ended on the 4th of July, and I miss it already. I miss the way Sigrid would tell Beric off for being a dick. So I'm ever going to listen to fucking Beric again. You go to the border, go to the border. We're fucking locked Shut up, go to the other channel. I miss Mike's ridiculous overconfidence of our war capabilities. I miss the way Dynas would throw a bitch fit at Mile Barbs about his melee combat abilities. Scracky playing gachi soundboards in the middle of battle. I miss the way people would simp after Chim and the way she blatantly encouraged it. I miss Naz's never-ending border raids. I miss Loxus raging over people over not pulling their weight. And you fucking retards left nah. with all, everything out! I miss Joshua joking about sinking HMS Hood, and me mocking him back because we sank Bismarck with obsolete biplanes. Truly, a spectacular collection of high-functioning autists. We may never see its like again. I would also genuinely like to thank Beric, Seagrid, DC, Mike, VT, Joshua, Saloon, Cloudy, Loxus, Hype, Nazboz, Shiro, Leo Lulu, and Honey Badger for shouldering the burden of leadership. Thank you for inviting me into Ashenfell so warmly. And although my time on Last Oasis is over, I hope my time with the low IQ apes has only just begun. <laughs>